All right. And before we jump into it, we got some feedback yesterday that um, the transition audio was a bit loud. So we take your feedback very seriously into account. We are here for you. And so I uh, wrote some FFmpeg scripts to <laughs> change the audio on all our transitions. As I said, we've got lots of automations. I didn't have time to fully automate it, but I've got that tested now. And then in future ones, it'll be automated to tone down that volume so you don't get your ears blasted. So thank you for that feedback. We listen and uh, really appreciate it. Yeah, so once we're you. done with here, we should probably do a, you know, a small uh, section or a small segment on one of our shows about how we actually coordinated and did this setup, <laughs> which is live, all the troubles and things that we went through to kind of bring this to you all live. So well, once again, thanks a lot. It's actually very fitting because next week we've got the guys from ShotStack. Correct. So that'll be really fun. <laughs> so that's, that, and they're a big part of how we, how we do, we use ShotStack to generate all these transitions. So we'll, we'll talk about that next, next week. Perfect. All okay. right. So open this search is serverless. A, Amazon Open Search <laughs> Serverless. Okay. So uh, this was an interesting announcement. I think from uh, AWS's standpoint, they are trying to make sure that the entire ecosystem of uh, BI and analytics solutions, ranging from your data, which is all in Aurora and Redshift and so on, to Athena and then over to QuickSight, as well as now OpenSearch. That's your entire ecosystem of um, all the BI tools that you need. For that, everything is serverless. Now, of course, serverless is a hugely overloaded term at this point. Um, but nevertheless, so, they're trying to make it easier for you to consume this without really having to worry about scaling or um, or trying to you know have to tweak it and manage it yourself. Well, it's, it's yeah, it's really, really exciting, the, the idea of serverless. But then I think this is the looking at some of the reception from the community. I think you're not the only one with that read on things. Um, there's This is actually a really good take from Ben Kehoe. Uh, saying yeah. <laughs> serverless in this case means auto-scaling. Right. Um, so there's minimum of four. So auto-scaling Elasticsearch is really cool. That, or open search, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's really cool to do that. That was definitely just remembering, learning how to set that up myself. It was yeah. a lot of brittle work, a lot of decisions right at the beginning, and now you don't have to do that. Correct. And I think uh, the way AWS looks at it is it's serverless v1 and then serverless v2. What serverless v1 did was just basic auto scaling, and then serverless v2 became they defined these compute units, whether it was a rural compute unit or you know uh, otherwise, and they start scaling that up and down. My only issue with uh, these auto scaling is that there is still a minimum uh, deployment requirement uh, that you have. I think Neptune was the last one that moved to serverless v2, but think- that minimum requirement is something that, that that kind of bothers me a little bit. I mean, if it is truly serverless it should be able to scale down to zero. So I think this is what we're hearing from, from the serverless community. You keep using the word. I do not think it means what you think it means. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's very apt. Uh, so yeah, take, take the word serverless with a little pinch of salt or a grain of salt and uh, you know, uh, read up for yourself about exactly what it means yeah. for your scenario and your use case. Uh, it isn't, you know, as serverless as you think it is. So it's, it's serverless in the sense that you're auto-scaling, but it's not serverless in that it scales to zero. Correct. I think maybe their thinking is, well, a lot of you know, it scales to a very small number, but not small enough that as a solo developer, you'd play with this and leave it running. That would still be $700 a month or so. So <laughs> it's, it's, yes. not, it's not scaled to zero. Correct. All right. Well, let's talk about another zero technology, zero ETL. That was a big theme of... Adam's keynote yesterday. So let's yep. start with the Redshift and Apache Spark integration. Here it comes. 